here's, uh, here's a guy who was a big hit on our uh, Gold Diggers show, and uh, since then he's been so busy we've had to wait in line to get him. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Stu Gilliam. friends. Hey, I'm not here to complain. I don't want it to get started with that, but everybody knows by now, professionally, I'm a comedian. Non-professionally, I'm a married man, which ain't no laughs at all. <laughs> I mean, you know, well, the problem stems around the fact of me being in show business and traveling, and well, the wife has been bugging me about someone to keep her company while I'm away on the road. I'm thankful she asked. Most wives don't. But she wants her mother to come. And the only problem is that is that she'd still be there when I get home. And coming home would be like the Christians used to look forward to Sundays in the Coliseum. <laughs> but at that, I was glad she mentioned her mother because it gave me an idea just what to get her for companionship. I said, darling, why don't you get a dog? Mm-hmm. A dog would be great companionship. It'd even scare away burglars at night. She said, so will my mama. <laughs> and she right. <laughs> but I told her, a dog won't open my mail and call me Uncle Tom every time I order vanilla ice cream. <laughs> now, once you get the idea, having a dog has got its drawbacks, too. I mean, look at the dog nappers. You ain't never heard of a mom-in-law napper. <laughs> No, I want you to get the idea that I'm going to start knocking marriage because I, I, I dig marriage. Really, I do. To some people, especially bachelors, marriage is just a bunch of small mouths to feed and one big one to listen to. <laughs> now, a lot of bachelors feel that marriage is an economic situation, keeping the wolf away from the door. That's not it. It's keeping the mink in the closet that bucks you. <laughs> and it, well, the, actually, a bachelor's biggest problem is to figure out how to get from, to work every morning from a different direction. <laughs> and, I, well, a bachelor's life isn't the easiest thing in the world. If you cook like I do, I remember one week my television went out and I had to eat radio dinners for a week. <laughs> You see, the problem is a lot of guys don't want to get married. They say, I don't want to go through life arguing. But they overlook what the marriage contract is all about. You promise to love, honor, and obey. There's nothing in the marriage contract that says you got to agree. <laughs> and uh, even the Pope's firm conviction wouldn't have, wouldn't have, have set you up for what my wife brings home for a watchdog. She brings home this little wet thing in her hat. Looks like a creation out of pipe cleaners by Salvador Dali with Phyllis Dillard modeling. So like I said, how much did you pay for the loser? She said, $600. So after she revived me, I said, $600? Who do you think I am, Sidney Portier? Are you ready for this? My wife, with her Afro-oriented cultural buying obsession, has bought a watchdog that does not bark. <laughs> right, it's a rare African bead called the Basenji. It's voiceless. I said, what do you do if a burglar breaks in? He writes me a note. <laughs> and that's what she did. She laughed. The dog jumped out of the hat and bit me. <laughs> How do you like this? I get a dog that's used to dark meat. <laughs> Not only that, he thinks laughter is the 12 o'clock dinner bell. <laughs> Here's the clincher, though. She comes in with a 65 buck sterling silver bowl for the dog. We decided to name him Humburu. I was holding out for Piranha. <laughs> The dog's got to have silver service. I'm still eating out of the palm of her hand because she don't want to do dishes. <laughs> now I'm in involved in a love triangle. I love my wife. My wife loves Humburu. Humburu hates me. Two out of three ain't bad. <laughs> but he's a good watchdog. I mean, if I hear a noise at night, 
All I do is wake up, roll over, tell my wife a joke, and the dog attacks me. <laughs> the owner of the building wants me to get rid of Humble Roo. And I can't understand it. Hey, there are at least ten kids in our, in our building that ain't house broke either. <laughs> hey, look, friends, I gotta leave you now. I gotta go to language class. You see, my wife taught Humburu to fetch my pipe and slippers. And just as soon as I learn enough Swahili, I'm going back to the house and get back my pipe and slippers from that mau mau mongrel. <laughs>